Hi there, and welcome to Mythbusters, New Faith Baptist Church International's Bible study during COVID-19 in 2021. <laughs> I'm Reverend Dr. Alexis Felder, First Lady and Minister of Ministry Operations. Reverend Greg Powell, Minister of Pastoral Care. Reverend Vines, Minister of Justice. We are in Genesis 35. We've been walking through the Bible. We started with myths about women. Oh, go figure. And now we are walking through Genesis and we're having fun. And we got some questions about the text today. So let's go in. Mm -hmm. Genesis right. 35. Genesis chapter 35, verse 1, uh, then God said to Jacob, go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing uh, from your brother Esau. Um, it kind of re reflects back on, on Genesis 28. Um, I don't know if you want to go there or not, but uh, um, it's, a, it's a recapsulation of, of Jacob's, uh, the, the events in Jacob's life um, around Bethel. Another striking thing is that uh, up to this point, um, it's been Jacob who has built the altars in response to God. And here for the first time, God is telling Jacob to build an altar. Oh, um, mm -hmm. yep, so anything else? No, keep going. All right. Um, also striking by the way, we remember this is coming back after the atrocity uh, committed by Jacob's sons against uh, Sech Shechem, uh, the people of Sech Shechem. I can never say that right. And um, and and so you know, it's it's striking that God, right now, immediately in the aftermath of that, um, reiterates his faithfulness to 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 his promise, not just to the people, but to the promise, uh, which is an important distinction. Mm -hmm. okay, verse two. So Jacob said to his household and all who were with him. Get rid of the foreign gods you have who get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Then come, let us go up to Bethel, where I will build an altar to God, who answered me in the day of my distress and who has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings in their ears, and Jacob buried them under the oak at Sechem. Then they set out, and the terror of God fell upon the towns all around them so that no one pursued them. Wow. wow. The terror of God? Yeah. What does that look like? I don't want to know. Well, I'll, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll read about it, but the I don't want to see it. The terror of God. I'll pass. <laughs> Me. So is it the idea, the notion, is it the fear, or did he rain fire? Yeah. Well, it it's it the it doesn't it doesn't indicate any um you know violent yeah, activity. In fact, if mm -hmm. anything, um it's God preventing the violence. Violence is justice. Mm. Not violence, it's justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the justice of God is not violent. <laughs> mm. So we're saying here that they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the city. So again, so it might've been in their heads. It might've been physical. It sounds like it was more the whole notion of touch not of my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the whole town knew not to mess with them. Yeah. To the point where they went, they didn't even gather, they didn't even put the army together. They didn't, it's like, right. no, we just, we'll, we'll, we'll just, eh, we'll pass. Right. Sounds like the first um, version of shaking the dust off your feet. <laughs> mm. Bury them foreign gods right here. In the head. Right, Leave it right. with them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is pretty extraordinary when you think about, uh, again, the, the, what the sons did to them, uh, what did to their, their, um, you know, co-inhabitants um, of the of these indigenous people. Um, it's 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 extraordinary that that God would still. Of course, the promise was made to Jacob and mm -hmm. to Abram. Um, not at this point directly to the sons. The sons are the agents by which God will um, eventually um, carry out the promises. But to 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 Jacob, um, but still, it's it's pretty extraordinary that. Uh, as you say, there is no, certainly no retributive, retributive justice uh, here, which you see so often. Um, you know, God didn't go and, and wipe them out. 
Right, right. 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 But didn't they kill all yeah. of the men? Then, then the sons kill all of the men, or is just an of, uh, that, of those people? But there were other inhabitants. Remember, after that, right, um, right, right. Jacob says, "You know, look what y'all did. Now the whole, all these other folk, <laughs> you know, will be a stench." I think in Jacob's words uh, to right. them, um, wow. and our our situation is is now precarious. Wow. Got Amen. it. Yeah. Continue uh, verse six. Um, Jacob and all the people with him came to Luz, that is Bethel, or Luz, uh, in the land of Canaan. There he built an altar, and he called the place El Bethel, because it was there that God revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. Hmm. Right. Hmm. So once again, he builds the altar normally, and now God has instructed him to build an altar. Yeah. And remember earlier, I think it was in chapter 30, uh, earlier, um, I can't remember what chapter, um, oh, uh, chapter 28, uh, Genesis 28 at uh, verse 20, uh, the Bible says, then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, I'm taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I can return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God. And mm. in this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house and all and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. So in a drop sense, a not, <laughs> drop a rock. Drop a rock. <laughs> drop a rock. Mm -hmm. and, and God is holding him to his vow. Yeah. Uh, so amazing. Yeah. You yeah. made the vow. I'm going to hold you to it. That's right. Here's your reminder. Mm. Drop a rock. <laughs> drop, drop a rock. rock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when, you know, when you're going through <laughs> and God brings you through. To the other side of through. Yeah. You need to drop a rock. Your rock. Drop a rock. <laughs> That's right. Drop a rock. Drop a rock. Drop a rock. Um, verse uh, seven. Um, now Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died and was buried under the oak below Bethel. So it was named Alan Bakuf, which means oak of weeping. Mm. To tell them about her new discovery. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Doc. No, no, oh, please. So used to. Oh. <laughs> well, I was asking the question about are they connected? Are the Deborahs mm -hmm. connected? Are the, the tree? Because the judge Deborah sat under a tree to judge. And here you have a tree named after a Deborah. And to my knowledge, there's only two that mm -hmm. I can recall in the Bible. So um, I was just wondering if they were connected. And when we looked, we found that there is a connection. Yep, in Genesis chapter four, verse five, where the prophet, the judge, mm -hmm. uh, Deborah, sits under the tree, uh, the, the tree of Deborah. And obviously it's not the tree named after herself since it was already named. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so um, this is the tree of, of Deborah, the, the servant of Rebecca, which is, which is phenomenal when you think about it. Um, that, and you see this so often in the Bible, you know, where the least, and, and, and especially in the God-centered um, aspects and, and, and uh, of the Bible, you know, going right into Jesus, where it's the, the underdog, it's the, the left out, it's the rejected, it's the servant um, who uh, is honored uh, above the king and the, you know, and all the, the elites. Um, and so here we have the servant of Rebecca. First of all, the, na the, the, the significance of Rebecca um, in the cultural memory of the people. Um, that's that was reflected more in the cultural memory of the people than in how they recorded it, even. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it's so significant that her servant, who, um, who's uh, uh, faithful to her through all that she went through in this whole uh, passage, this whole journey, um, she's given, she's honored um, and honored and then passed. And that honor is um, what, an inspiration or a, um, it gives context or uh, whatever, but that, that, that this, this woman influences this, this, this next Deborah um, who is the judge of Israel. Let's read Genesis 24. Um, and let's hear the, um, I love that 59. Excuse me. Um, yeah. Go to verse 59 of Genesis um, 24, verse 59. On my way. On our way. Genesis chapter 24. Fifty-nine and 
So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way, along with her, oh, along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, oh sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the cities of their enemies. My, my, my. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Just wanted to get that one out there because I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it too. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? No, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, just continues to tie her to the promise. You know, it just it's throughout the throughout the journey. It's just always tied Rebecca to the God's purpose and plan and promise. Yeah. Amen. And, and yeah, that's, that's powerful. Um, verse nine. After Jacob returned from Padam Aram, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, "Your name is Jacob." but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. And God said to him, I am God almighty, be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you and kings will come from your body. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I also give to you. And I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at the place where he had talked with him. Verse 14, Jacob set up a stone pillar at the place where God had talked with him and he poured out a drink offering on it. He also poured oil on it. And Jacob called the place where God had talked to him Bethel. So it's another strand of, of, um, of, of uh, cultural memory or, or um, that, uh, that parallels, of course, we know that, that in another telling of the story, uh, the, uh, Jacob is named after wrestling with, with God or with the, the messenger of God. Um, and with a man, <laughs> um, and uh, and as, at, at, at that point, at the point where he prevails, according to scripture, um, then the then God names him, your name will no longer be Jacob, Israel. So here we have a, a, a different version, if you will, a different telling of the same story of how he went from Jacob to Israel. And so Jacob the, has two encounters the now with the theophany. Jacob has two encounters with the theophany, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first encounter, what happened? The, you're talking about the wrestling the with wrestling? the wrestling. Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. The the um the the um the dream the, uh, the that you know with with his head on the pillar the the dream of the the uh, the, the, just going the, up the, down the ladder and, up and down the ladder, yeah. Stand, you know, standing at the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and what was his response to that dream? To build an altar, I believe. Correct. To drop a rock. Drop a rock. <laughs> drop a rock. Yeah. And then he has another theophany. What happened? Uh, he wrestles with the with the with the with the angel with the God, um, all night. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm wondering now because what was so different that now he has to have physical contact with the angel? versus when he just saw the ladder of them working. I, well, I think part of it because he was in a different place in his journey. Um, mm -hmm. if, I, if I recall, um, when he, the, the um, vision of the, uh, in the dream, the, the dream vision um, of, of the, the, the heavenly, um, the, the, the stairway to heaven, so to speak, uh, was, at the, was as he's, um, oh, wait, 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 wait. You know what? Need to look back. What's the purpose of it? What's the purpose of it? You know, did he miss out? Did he miss Could out? Could he have gotten a touch? Could he have gotten a touch then? <laughs> hmm. I'm asking. Yeah. I'm asking. Yeah. Did he not respond properly? How? Because I mean, we get opportunities after opportunities and don't respond properly. Mm hmm. So was it a time that God was manifesting? He could have got that touch then. He could have had that wrestle in. I mean, it was all right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, but in the right. second, in, in the wrestling with the angel, the angel actually attacks him. Mm. God actually, you know, attacks him. And so that wow. could have- come on now, help me with that because well. why is God having to attack us? <laughs> mm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Come on now, let's pull these layers. Let's pull these layers off of this. You know, some of us hard, we're a little hard here when it comes to God, you know, <laughs> just being present. It, we, it take a little bit more <laughs> to get our attention. I, you know? I can't hear you. Exactly. You know? Yeah, what'd you say? 
Uh, let me show you what I'm saying. You know, I'm here. So I don't know. I mean, whenever the Lord appears, something happens. Uh -huh. You know, knock, knock, Mary. <laughs> Guess what? Don't be surprised. We got something in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's me. It's me. It's me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> right. So don't worry. It wasn't him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whenever he appears, something happens. He doesn't just appear to confirm he's with us. Sure. Hmm. He appears because something is about if something has happened. Moses had a burning bush, and so he was sent. Mm -hmm. And then he went up to the mountain, and he waited, and he came down with tablets, <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, scrolls. He came down with the book of Eli. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In his heart whatever right mm -hmm. so what was the purpose of this did jacob not respond to the presence of god the first time did he miss it um well it, it what he does respond by that that that's the first place where he builds the altar of bethel and so and any name and that's the first place where he names it uh, uh bethel you know in in ref in dropping the rock um in terms of his appearance the the god's appearance um, and, and I believe that I'm looking to see where the, um, because. So then it comes full circle back to the same location. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and part of the subtext of that is, is explaining how Bethel became yeah. a worship leader, a worship center. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go somewhere. Don't be mad at me. But, um, <laughs> so now you said God had to attack him. He missed it the first time. How often do we miss it and say, oh, we're just going to worship. We're just going to, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, people give their offering weekly with no expectation. People pray daily and read their word with no expectation. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Jacob got a glimpse of God and his cups was full. So we had no expectation. Mm -hmm. So when he came back around, had to get his butt beat. Mm -hmm. Now he can hear the angel like, what's up? You ready now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just my perspective on it. Because I'm like, okay, yeah. something happened. Whenever he'd appeared to me, it was uh, now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he ain't sitting down just chit chatting now. And I don't talk to the Lord. I don't say something. He says something back. But that he don't just show up, just show up. Right. It's for purpose. Everything so God what does did for Jacob purpose. not get? And it wasn't just to worship. It wasn't just to honor his presence because he don't need to show up for him to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in the first appearance, oh wait, in the um He is uh, still on the. I can't. He's still on the run. Uh, he's still on the move. Um, and uh, imagine mm -hmm. had he tapped into it. And, and how the, often are we so bogged down with being on the run? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And and in the fear, because in verse 16, 28, 16, and seventeen, mm -hmm. uh, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Um, then he sets up the pillar and calls the place Bethel. Um, See what fear does? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can miss God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Put this you in the, the utter loneliness. Time. Right. When he's there. Now. He's running from his brother. Now imagine what the course would have been, the direction his life would have been had he tapped in then. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Maybe he was ran to another cousin's house and got a different wife. I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> another father-in-law. Right. Yeah. But yeah, something well, we was supposed to happen there. And he said, I was afraid. And so all he was fear would only let him do 
was acknowledge God's presence was there. That's what fear does. It mm -hmm. shuts us down. It limits our reach. It limits our vision. What we can hear, what we can dream. Because there's only two states in the world. You're either in a state of joy or you're in a state of suffering. Mm -hmm. And it all has tears. Yeah. You know, ego, we, we tell people that their, their ego is too big when they're being, um, when they're being um, um, verbose, but when, but ego is also depression. Mm. Mm. Ego is also not thinking you're enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Some people push their way through the door to make sure that they're seen and heard. And some people ball up in a corner and try to fade into the paint. It's mm -hmm. still ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still ego. Yeah. See how the devil play games with language. Yeah. So we'll point out the loud one, but we'll ignore the one trying to be invisible when they're both operating through their what? Ego. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so I think he missed something. And that's why the angel attacked him because this is your assignment. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, right, and there he is, full, full circle, right back in the place where you were supposed to get it the first time. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. That's just yeah. my view of it. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and, and, and it's interesting that, that, that happens at the beginning when he's at the beginning of his journey, uh, you know, right after the, the conflict with Esau, right after the, you know, and he's on the run, basically on the run for his life. Um, and, and at that point, God says, God gives him the vision, you know, I'm with you basically, or I, I, I am, you know, um, uh, um, you know, you have to believe that he is real and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, first, you got to believe that he's, you got to know he's real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so God, you know, give, gives him that, um, confronts him there uh, or, or in, engages him there. Um, and, and at the beginning of this journey to let him know, uh, this ain't just about you, speaking to ego. You know, mm -hmm. this ain't just about you. Uh, your despair is not just yours. Your fear is not, doesn't belong. None of it belongs to you. It belongs to me. I am God. And, and I think that empowers him. He drops his rock, <laughs> you know, his first act of, of, of worship, um, of, of uh, well, yeah, his first recorded act of worship <laughs> um, is, is there, is in response to that vision. And thank God, but it's after God leaves. And I believe that's why I brought him right back to the same place where he missed him. How often do we end up in the same place we missed him? Mm-hmm. Because you're not moving from the last instruction he gave you. He's still right there. <laughs> yeah. That's and, then right. Sometimes, he and then sometimes God gives you instruction that you could to, on the on the path that this this is to get you from point A to point B. This is this encounter, if you will, is to get you from point B to point C. And this is to to fit to take well, you to the next level. We know he does level. that, but Jacob missed him right there. And if God wanted to talk to him and wrestle with him and snatch him up at a different point in time on a journey, he could have. He could have. But he brought him right back to the spot where he missed him because of fear. I was afraid, is what he said. I didn't say it. He said it. Isn't that what the text say? Huh? Uh, yeah. That, yeah, uh, that's, yeah that's, that's what it said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah fear blocks us it, it limits us and how often i believe he was thinking he, he was relying more on he was terrified of his brother <laughs> mm -hmm. he was out there by himself right you know he was a sheltered child mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. and and he was depending on his on society on the knowledge that he had he was depending on himself so when god appeared he had it he had it. And so here's his plan. There it is. Now he's right back at the same spot. Everything that you was running from is still right here waiting for you. So you still have to deal with it. 
Mm -hmm. Different outcome, time has passed, you know, they say distance makes the heart go fonder. They say time heals all wounds. Well, okay. Mm-hmm. Pray and see. Because mm-hmm. everybody don't heal fast. Right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Everybody don't heal fast. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, um, if you're not a giver, it's hard to forgive. Mm-hmm. So, right. So everybody don't heal fast. Mm-hmm. But he's back at the same point that he missed it. Mm-hmm. And so we got to make sure that we don't let our creature comforts get in the way of the move of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still an angel before he saw a bunch of angels. Mm -hmm. So he could have easily just said, help, go get my brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. But his response was silence, apparently, right? He didn't say nothing. He just, after it was gone, then he drop the rock. So you're saying that in, in the midst of what he was saying and what, what he was experiencing, he had an opportunity then then to, to actively be a part of what what was going on in that moment instead of just, and, and whatever results came from that, he will never know. <laughs> and we'll never know because, you know, he, he didn't tell the story about it. Uh, but there, yeah, I, I there are opportunities. Could have been a better father-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Could have been a better father-in-law, another cousin. <laughs> I mean, even in our worship experience to, today, when we know that there's a move of God happening in the church, when you know it's it's inevitable that God is in the building, He's there. Tap in, tap, tap in. in. Yeah, tap you in. have a group of people that right, are just. Because how long did it take him? Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take him to come back to him and engage him? like that Mm -hmm. he engaged him along the way Mm -hmm. but that touch those Mm -hmm. angels that activity Mm -hmm. i'm just saying i mean all the players are still there Mm -hmm. why the angel there was the angel waiting on him 10 years 20 years (laughs) i mean what (laughs) it took you so long you showed it but you didn't take me (laughs) <laughs> Where I think maybe God was showing him a ladder of angels. Pick the ones you want. You can have them all. Or maybe it was mm-hmm. his ladder of angels. You know, they say we got them de- designated for us. Mm-hmm. So maybe it was his ladder of angels. He could have tapped into them. And maybe that's the message we, we, we don't understand. That there are warring angels really available for us. But because we had the cute little fat ones with the baby fat and the, the harp and the arrow, mm-hmm. we can't see the concept of heavenly host Mm -hmm. but i pray to the god of the heavenly host Mm -hmm. to shoot an arrow Mm -hmm. to send fire Mm -hmm. to come to my aid and so here he is running for his life Mm -hmm. i don't know Mm -hmm. all the same players are still at the same location it's almost like going to the club and 10 years later, you go back and all the same people sitting at the same spot at the bar. <laughs> right. They were waiting for it. Right. Yeah, nothing had changed except he wasn't at, he didn't approach the angel. The angel grabbed him. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, he does make the vow um, at the end uh, at, in response to that. Uh, sets, sets up the altar, drops his rock, pours oil, uh, uh, um, pours an offering on top of it, um, and then makes the vow that, uh, you know, if you return, if you be with me, you know, I'll, I'll uh, and I, so that I can return safely to my father's house, which is the promised land, by the way. He's, he's at the beginning, he's running away from uh, the, 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 the land of the promise. Um, mm-hmm. if, when he confronts, when the angel attacks him, he's going back uh, to the promise. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and that he would set up the, the, the pillar it will be God's house, Bethel, and that he said, all that you give me, I'll give you a tenth. Um, I still think he missed out on his blessing. Hmm. I still think he missed out on the initial part of the blessing. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we all got some in our lives. And hello, don't we? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I should have taken that job. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that was an open door for me. Yeah. I didn't have the right people around me to advise me properly. I, yeah. yeah, we've all had the opportunity and made the best out of it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. 
I just know all the same people are in the same spot, except they're engaging him differently now. <laughs> He's not, they're not asked, they're not letting him, his will do it. Right. This is a cunny boy. <laughs> this way. <laughs> right. So I'm sorry, it just was interesting. Yeah, it's we, interesting. It's 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 good. Good. I mean, it's, we have to make those those decisions in in the you know in in the moment of God's and the experience that God is giving us and it and and we I mean if we view it as you know Jacob having an opportunity to tap into something else that was present that he uh, that he chose not to in that moment you know that's a decision that you 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 have to make now you know I mean it's he's in the place he's a, so what is my response am I just gonna be frightened of people, you know, laying prostrate before the Lord, or, you know, whatever the case is, whatever that response is where the spirit is moving, or am I going to be, you know, or am I going to cower in fear because I don't want to, you know, but you will miss out on an opportunity that, that, that you could have had, you know, so there, I mean, the possibility is there because we don't know until we engage, you know, a lot of times what's, what's happening you know, in the spirit. Some of those things that are too good to be true, you know, We've mm -hmm. seen those things and we always tell people it's too good to be true. It is. Well, guess what? I saw a ladder of angels. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know, but I just feel, I believe that there's a message there for us that, you know, we, um, we can't allow fear to um, stop us from launching out into the deep for, um, for receiving what God wants us to do. Perhaps who knows what his life could have been. Maybe God would have touched him and sent him back to Esau. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe Esau would have been on a run <laughs> since he like living with other women, right? right. right. He, got host, he got a host with him. Jacob came right. back with a host. <laughs> he, he the one that he's the one comfortable with the foreigners, not me. So why am I running? Mm -hmm. So you know, just I don't know, something to ponder. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the God reiterates uh, the, in the wording of the promise, um, he basically uh, reiterates the promise, the original promise he had given to Abraham, the, eight, the, the then Abram in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 through 8, uh, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you, will greatly increase your numbers. Um, here uh, in verse 11, uh, uh, chapter 35, verse 11, God says to Jacob, I am God Almighty, be fruitful, increase in number, community and a nation, community of nations will come from you and kings will come from your body. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I also give to you and I will give this land uh, to your descendants after you. And then God went up from him uh, at the place where he had talked with him. Uh, and then he sets, he, he drops his rock. Um, and so uh, here we have the, basically the confirmation, uh, really the final, the, the, um, climactic <laughs> um, confirmation of, of the original promise and it being fully transferred to Jacob. And of course, now begins the story, the, now the story of Jacob begins to conclude and the story of his sons or to shift the focus from Jacob uh, to the story of his sons, mm. to, the, to, the, to the journey of his sons. All right, let's keep going. All right. Um, and of course that promise was given to Isaac as well in, in Genesis 28, uh, verse 16. Then they move on from Bethel. While they were still some distance from Ephra, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. And as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, don't be afraid for you have another son. As she breathed her last for she was dying. She named her son Ben-Oni, Ani, but his father named him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Over her tomb, Jacob set up a pillar. And to this day, the pillar marks Bethel, uh, Rachel's tomb. Sure it does. <laughs> Just like that pillar of salt. <laughs> of course, cool. we know that. A little different. <laughs> Of course, we know that a, that infant mortality was a fact of absolute fact of life at any time uh, in the ancient world, um, and especially in the impoverished ancient world. But in the ancient world in general, and in impoverished, in in uh, economically destabilized and 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 uh, dis dis um, um, uh, 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 and impoverished regions in this world, um, oppressed regions in this world, that's still a day-to-day -day reality. 
that that anytime a woman chooses to get or is uh, gives birth, that it's a life, literally a life and death situation in ways that uh, we can barely imagine um, in, in our in this country culture technology, unless you're poor and black, because black women have a much harder time uh, in the medical establishment than than uh, other women in this country. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, it's interesting up. because she called him Ben Oni, son of my sorrow, mm -hmm. which is interesting. But if it's a, if Oni is a girl's name, it means God has favored me. Hmm. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So why is it a negative for a boy? It is a positive for a girl. Because in my country, if it means one thing, it means the same for male and female. <laughs> right. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So when he changed the name to Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Son of the South, son of days. Yeah. Son of yeah. the right hand. Right. Son of the right, right hand. hand, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, it, it gives another, that actually gives another, uh, a possible slant, because we all know that, of course, that the, the, uh, um, the, the uh, bias of, of any of these texts is always going to be toward the, the male, the, the, the husband, the son, um, et cetera. And so um, if that were the original meaning of the name or you know, another meaning of the name, and yet the Bible only chooses to, 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 to this meaning, uh, it kind of gives another slant to uh, Jacob, who, by the way, whose grieving is oddly not recorded at all. Hmm. Um, I mean, not even in a, in a, in a, no mention is given whatsoever. Uh, we assume it, um, hmm. given that, uh, that Jacob proclaims his love for Rachel and worked all those years for her, you know, basically, uh, uh, you know, got into this mess with Laban um, because of his own stuff with Esau, but got entangled into it because of his love uh, for her. So it's really interesting and may, it just could be, it just didn't, they just didn't record it, but it's hmm. interesting that there's no mention Mm -hmm. of uh, not a sentence, of uh, mm -hmm. not a line of Jacob uh, grieving for Rachel, um, in spite of the 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 uh, mention of her grieving and of the of, of uh, um, and uh, and of her sorrow. Mm -hmm. So maybe just the focus was on her, but I, I just find that striking that that uh, you know. And Jacob grieved with her. <laughs> you know, right, right, right. You know. Didn't have to be long, <laughs> yeah. but just acknowledge it just a little yeah, bit. You know, after he cried. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, he changed the name of the child. There's right. no, no mention whatsoever. You guys never grieve our loss. You guys go on and get married in three months, six months when we die. We don't ever get married after y'all die. For multiple reasons. But... <laughs> <laughs> you guys go and get married right away. You already got your next wife picked up. <laughs> That's why he didn't grieve. How many concubines did he have? I look at the very like, okay, we're on the end door right now. <laughs> Stop the paddle again. I think it's, it's important here, um, uh, and we can, especially to how men read the Bible. Um, you know, the Bible being coming from a patriarchal point of view and being, you know, history, mythology, legend, you know, all these different forms of writing and, and times of writing all kind of put together um, into, you know, and God putting God's inspired word being embedded in that as, as God's will is embedded in our lives and in our journey. It, it, it's important for us to understand that, that the focus is on heroic men on, you know, on men who command armies, on men who are kings, men who are patriarchs, you know, men who go out and slay, you know, slay the enemy. Um, and, and um, you know, when men feel lost, you know, eh, you know, let's go on, let's, uh, you know, my wife died, okay, no problem, I, uh, what's next? Change that boy's name to, <laughs> to a man's name. <laughs> you know, son of my, of the right hand. Yeah, now let's go forward. I mean, and, you know, the unfortunate thing is not only what it does to women um, who read it at face, face value 
without taking that into, into context, but it does damage to men because men read this and figure that's how we're supposed to grieve. Supposed to be, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's toxic. You know, when people talk about toxic masculinity, they tend to talk about what we exude toward others, uh, particularly toward women, which is real, which yes, is toxic. But what, we, what it does to us um, and what we do to ourselves trying to conform to yeah. this image of men that is not meant for that purpose. You know, that you're not supposed to be Homer, you know, I mean, to uh, Odyssey. Um, uh, 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 I just jacked, jacked that up. Uh, Odyssey, yeah, my man, the rapper, he's a, he's a bad boy. Odysseus, you know, you're not, we're not supposed to be Hercules. We're not supposed to be, you know, these, these, these legendary heroic figures. We're supposed to be human beings, um, ultimately. And so that's a, we should just, just to the bros who read these scriptures, this is not how we supposed to grieve. And if you get hurt and you say, ouch, and you get hit and life hits you and you cry like I'm crying <laughs> um, when, when life has hit me. Um, that's, that's not unmanly, that's human. And so let's not, let's, let's, you gotta dig past that to get to what God is saying. Yeah. 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 Moving on. Keep going. All righty, verse uh, 21. Um, then, uh, um, then, Israel moved on again, and oh, by the way, Benjamin, we see, we'll see him again in Genesis 44, um, at the when when uh, you know Joseph becomes uh, the uh, um, a high official in Egypt, and they come to, to, to the the, the uh, uh, Jacob and his children come because uh, from the famine, and he you know he hides himself, he just you know they can't recognize him because you know. Dang. And so, uh, and 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 so he asked for the young son, the young boy, and Benjamin is him. The father is hiding him or is trying to protect him from what he thinks might be the wrath of Joseph. And you know, that's uh, Benjamin comes, and we, you know, we have a weepy scene there. Yeah. You know, where men actually cry, by the cry. way. Cry. <laughs> your point. Let it out. Your point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let it out. Yeah. Please, <laughs> Verse 21, Israel moved on again and pitched his tent beyond Migdal Eder. While Israel was li living in that region, Reuben went in and slept with his father's concubine, Bilhah, and Israel heard of it. Jacob had 12 sons, the sons of Leah, Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, Simeon, uh, Le Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, the sons of Rachel's maidservant, Bilhah, Dan and Naphtali, the sons of Leah's maid servant Zilpah, Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padam Aram. Jacob came home to his father Isaac in Mamre, near Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had stayed. Isaac lived 180 years. Then he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people, old and full of years. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. And that concludes chapter 35. Wow, that was a lot. Yeah. That was a lot. So, okay, let's go back now. Who had sex with who? What? <laughs> it's complicated. Who slept with right, who, right, mama? Right. who slept with who, mama? Right. I'm trying to remember about There's him. There's a lot going on in there. There's a lot going on. <laughs> so, Reuben who went. <laughs> Reuben goes and, and sleeps with, uh, with uh, Dan and Naphtali's mama. Bilha, um, Rachel's. So now, why did Bilha make that happen? That's, that's Didn't she have a voice? Uh, well, we know we know the answer to that, right? Yeah. Well, no, we don't, because that's Daddy's concubine. Mm-hmm. And Daddy got kids with her, so that's not his concubine; that's his other wife. Mm -hmm. So now the son, his son, is sleeping with. His brother's mother. Mm hmm. Yep. We mm -hmm. had a world. <laughs> we had a cheering. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what it is. He is brother daddy. <laughs> brother. <laughs> the tribes. <laughs> uh, yeah, brother stepfather. <laughs> Brother, stepfather, right, <laughs> uncle, Dan daddy. and Natalie. Yeah. yeah, grandpa, daddy, <laughs> grandpa, uncle, uncle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uncle and I mean, daddy. we see, and we see that the, the you know again the family 
issue, the family dynamics and how they're, what they did, the sons did, is, is playing out um, in these family, uh, these family conflicts and whatnot. Um, and it is also interesting that it's Reuben is the son of Leah, the unloved wife, uh, uh, mother, um, and the, the Milha is the mother of Dan and of Tally. And so mm -hmm. one wonders if uh, there's a, um, what kind of resentments, what kind of, uh, you know, power plays. Uh, it's a lot, there's a lot of dynamics that it would probably take a psychi psychologist to, to unwind, even, uh, even theoretically. Um, but there's, there's a lot at play there. Well, wow. so now yeah. for those of us, talk about this, the wives again, Leah and Rachel, their descriptions at the beginning of their story are, Leah is the one that has the, she's, she has how many children with him and she, her description is, and, and Rachel is the other one, how many mm -hmm. kids and what is her description? How does the story describe them again? Um, the implication um, of how, of the translation is that Rhea, that Leah, that Rachel was the was the pretty one and Leah was the ugly one, was the homely one. That's that's the implication of the translation mm -hmm. because that translation, I think it's about the wandering eye or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know that translation is is not clear. Um, mm -hmm. You know it it could have been I believe it could have been it could also be translated as something like the light, the eye with the light or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, so, but anyway. The, the way it's translated, the story is translated, Leo's the ugly one, <laughs> quote unquote, the one he didn't love, you know, the one the, the, the one the dad was just trying to find somebody uh, for a husband for. Um, and Rachel was the pretty girl who uh, Jacob actually loved. And Jacob wants to marry and, and offers his services and, and indentured servitude in a sense uh, to marry Rachel. And uh, Laban switched the bride um, in the uh, night of the of the honeymoon, so to speak. And so now these women have had their children. The men are gone. The women are gone. Mm -hmm. And now the kids have to live their lives, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where we are now. Yeah. Now the moms are dead. Well, you know, except the maid servants, the, the mm -hmm. concubine moms, right? Mm-hmm. So now we're about to go into the, the lives of the children. Yep. Dun, dun, Transition dun. of the story. Yeah. Wow. So Genesis 36 is about to get stuck. It's about to get mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's well, also interesting uh, that uh, that um, uh, when Isaac dies, when when the father dies, and of course, um, you know, the, his story, in a sense, the narrative of the story ends a long time ago, but here he dies, and that his sons Esau and Jacob together uh, bury him, with Esau mentioned first um, as the eldest. Um, and so apparently their relationship at some level um, has been restored, repaired, uh, negotiated or something there. There is a, a working relationship and uh, between the two of them at this point. The hatchet appears to have been buried. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Praise the Lord. Well, I think it's about to get even juicier now because now oh, yeah. the kids get to live out. If your if your emotional tank was developed between the ages of one and seven or one and five, mm -hmm. yeah, the, mm -hmm. this is about the story is about to get really juicy. That's why we tell yeah. people the Bible is really a great book to read. <laughs> you know, intrigue, <laughs> right, boy, mystery. Right, there it is. That's right. You want espionage? It's right here. <laughs> But if you want a relationship with Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, it's right here today. And all you have to do is repeat this prayer after me. Salvation is a free gift only offered through Jesus Christ. And the good news is he doesn't give it away and take it away like people do. When you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you're saved. Now you have to live out the relationship like you live out any other relationship with any other person you have. You honor it, you respect it, you protect it. And you connect with the ministry so that you can develop it and understand it more. There's so many great things connected to God and we miss out on it because we're not connected. So if you wanna be connected today, please repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Dear Jesus, come live in my heart, be Lord of my life. I believe right now I am saved. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for my new beginning. Thank you for loving me. 
Amen. If you prayed this prayer, you are saved today. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And as I stated to you, God isn't flaky like people are. No, when he says it, he means it. And so then he works with you. And as we make our mistakes and we do our thing, he works us, he works with us through it, but he never ever leaves us nor forsake us. So go in peace. Newfaith.org, newfaith.org. Fill out your new members information if you want to join us, and we'll see you in new members class. See you next week. Peace. We love you. Bye-bye. Have a great week.